So you've glown up and you're ready to game on something other than a crusty Dell hand-me-down, but you don't wanna spend a fortune on unnecessary bells and whistles. So what do you buy? To find out, we checked the pricing history of the most popular mid-range gaming keyboards on Amazon, and we bought these nine contenders for the middleweight crown. To be included, each of our boards had to be available for between 50 and $75 at least three times in the last few months. So that's the setup. Now let's see how they fall into place. Today's video is brought to you by Glasswire. What's going in and out of your PC when you're connected to the internet? Find out with Glasswire and see if there are any suspicious apps that are behaving badly. Use offer code Linus to get 25% off at the link below. At $75, the Razer Ornata Chromax is one of the most expensive boards here, but not without reason. It wins the award for best unboxing experience and the product itself feels quality too. There's well thought out slots for routing the braided cable on the underside and the absolutely plush wrist rest stands out as clearly the best in show. It features full RGB lighting under what Razer calls mecha mechanical key switches, which unfortunately is where things start to fall apart a little bit for the Ornata Chromax. Marketing aside, these are essentially rubber dome key switches with the large stem of the keys being used to stabilize its keystrokes. That means that there's a squishy bottom out for each keystroke with a rather heavy actuation force. So unless RGB is your top priority, it's hard to recommend because for this price, I would have hoped to see actual mechanical switches which as it turns out, isn't just me being unreasonable because next up is the Corsair K63, a backlit 10 keyless board with Cherry MX red switches that regularly hits just 40 US dollars. Now don't expect any extra furls here. The backlighting is only one color, but at least thanks to Corsair's feature rich IQ software, the keys are individually addressable and they're remappable. It has flip down legs at the back if you prefer a slight inclination to your board, with that said, if you want a wrist rest, you're gonna have to shell out another $10 to get the first party one from Corsair that clips on. The Cherry MX Red key switches perform exactly as you'd expect with a smooth linear feel and excellent stabilization. And I was really happy to see that even at this price, there's still dedicated media, lighting, and volume control keys on the board. Now the casing is plastic, which gave me pause, but thanks to the K63's short length, DeckFlex was a non-issue for it. At the end of the day, if you don't need a number pad or RGB, this is an excellent choice. Next up is a company I had actually never heard of before. The GameNote Havit RGB KB378L looks great on paper. The Cherry MX Blue equivalent switches are made by Otemu, a respected enough clone manufacturer. There's a full array of media keys, including a volume roller, the macro keys can be programmed on the fly and the included adjustable wrist rest is a nice touch, even if it is a bit of a grease magnet. They also get bonus points for the braided cable and the integrated two port USB hub. That's a really nice touch, even if it can't be used for high powered devices. Unfortunately though, the switches lack stabilization with the shift key in particular turning to jello if you so much as bump your desk. It's also the loudest keyboard in our roundup. Clicky Blues are already a bit of a strange choice for gaming and definitely not recommended for streamers. And the metallic reverb on the return stroke reminds us more of the build quality we came to expect from entrance in our previous cheap mechanical keyboards roundup than this one. But it's affordable, it looks cool, and it features full perky RGB backlighting. So I guess that explains its popularity even if it's not the greatest typing experience. The Red Dragon Devrajas, say that 10 times fast, uh, lands in the lower end of our price range and also has per key RGB backlighting with hotkeys to change between 18 different effects and six levels of brightness, including off. Its aluminum construction is very stiff. This monster is just a hair over a kilogram and under the hood, we find Red Dragon branded brown switches with a kale style stem that resulted in decent key stabilization. 
Also in the box are both keycap and key switch pullers to go with this little pack of four pairs of different switches. Now, I can imagine a use for this. Maybe you want a later actuation force on your crouch button or something, but I'm still not sure exactly what their rationale for this particular loadout of switches was. As far as typing comfort goes, the lack of a wrist rest is disappointing, but overall, I'd say the experience is solidly average. Finally, one build quality critique, the tolerances on our USB plug caused it to be very, very tight, almost to the point where we felt like it could damage the port it was inserted into, but your mileage may vary. Overall, we liked the Devarajas, but its lack of media control and macro keys and its similar price to GameNote's offering did put it at a slight disadvantage. Next up is Corsair, again, this time with the K55 RGB. At 50 bucks, it won't break the bank and you get RGB lighting, but there's a big catch. This is 2013 grade RGB with only three lighting zones and no way to highlight specific keys. This also isn't a mechanical keyboard. With that said though, the membrane switches here have better than average stabilization, even if they lack the tactility of a mechanical switch. What this board lacks in switches though, it makes up for with a full suite of media controls along with six dedicated macro keys that are programmable through Corsair's IQ software. The included wrist rest has a nice soft touch textured feel that doesn't gather fingerprints or smudges. And there is a little bit of deck flex if you're heavy handed on the keys, but the average person would be hard pressed, get it, to notice anything. Overall, we really liked it for all around use and if you're a video editor, those macro keys can really improve your process. Actually, we have a video coming up soon on building a budget 4K editing setup, so make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss that. The Ataobot Athletic Gaming Keyboard is targeted squarely at gamers and features an anodized aluminum chassis with Quano blue mechanical switches. It's an affordable route to mechanical switches and full individual key RGB backlighting. However, while there are a handful of hotkey combos for enabling canned effects, customizing the lighting is next to impossible because the config app is really bad. Like really, really bad, incomprehensible translation, unscalable, tiny window bad, D minus for effort. Moving on, the double shot keycaps allow the rgb to shine through the back of the rather large legends, but unfortunately, the keycaps were poorly enough stabilized particularly the larger ones, to earn this board a solid meh in our roundup. Changing gears completely, the Logitech K840 Mechanical stands out right out of the gate with its bead blasted aluminum top plate and sharp, professional looking gray aesthetic. Inside, it packs Romer G switches, which due to their large box profile have very good stabilization, but they're not for everyone. If you've never felt one, they could probably be best described as a mushier MX Brown. The keycaps themselves are ABS with pad printed legends, but other than cheaping out there, the build quality is what you'd expect from Logitech and we didn't have any complaints uh, until we noticed that at the same price as the other keyboards we featured today, it has no backlighting whatsoever. And you can hate on RGB all you want, but when you're in the dark, it can be pretty useful to be able to see what you're doing. And it also has no num lock and no scroll lock indicators for some reason. Also, the leading edge of the deck, rather than tapering down towards the desk, has a really sharp design to it that wasn't super comfortable without a wrist rest, so we'd recommend adding one of those for optimal comfort. Unfortunately, that pushes the total cost of this solution to the high end of our lineup. But what this board lacks in frills, it makes up for with top quality software and a clean aesthetic, mostly. The lack of any media controls is a serious bummer. Again from Corsair, man, these guys have a lot of keyboards now. We've got the K68 RGB. It's equipped with Cherry MX Reds, has a full selection of media keys over the numpad and includes a wrist rest to boot. What's not to love? Well, there are a couple of things, starting with the dust and water resistance that's built into the board. It consists of a silicone membrane around each switch. And you might think, huh, heck yeah, a keyboard that's finally Cheeto dust proof. But while that may be, the silicone takes the normally silky smooth linear feel of an MX Red and adds a bit of a cushion at the end of each stroke. While that might not be the end of the world to you, and in fact, 
gamers who want the absolute best responsiveness out of their keyboard avoid bottoming them out, the silicone also diffuses light under the keys. So if you say selected a different color for your WASD keys, it will bleed out into the surrounding ones. With that said, Corsair's build quality doesn't disappoint here. We observe very little deck flex, even if you're a key smasher. The wrist rest has a nice soft touch stippled finish that doesn't smudge with hand oils and silicone key booties aside, it actually types pretty well as it should, considering that it only hits our $75 target when it's deeply discounted. Finally, the Logitech G610 Orion is a sturdy, no-nonsense board, this time with backlighting and your choice of Cherry MX Reds or Browns and a two-year warranty with Logitech's outstanding customer service. It has a nice rigid chassis with a braided cable and three angle options for the integrated kickstands. It weighs in at over 1200 grams, so if you're looking for portability, this might not be the best choice, but that weight is used effectively as there is minimal deck flex, allowing its cherry switches to perform as intended. Where the G610 really shines though, is in the extra controls with a nice big volume roller and dedicated media keys. Even if there's no RGB, the lighting controls can be changed with the dedicated lighting button, plus the number row for effects, while this key cycles through five steps of brightness, including off. Typing on this board was quite enjoyable in our testing with excellent key stabilization, but the ABS keycaps were a little bit sharp on the edges and prone to gathering finger oils. So if you want the Logitech experience, but you don't like Romer G switches, this is your go-to. Now to crown a champion. If we had to pick just one, the Corsair K63 stands out for its combination of gaming performance, key feel, build quality, software quality, and price. When discounted to around 40 bucks, which happens with reasonable regularity, it is just really hard to beat. If you must have individual RGB backlighting on the cheap, the Game Note Have It and the Red Dragon Davarararararas are our co-picks. The key stabilization on the Game Note did give us pause, but this is a truly feature-rich board at a price that even four or five years ago, I would have said was impossible for a full RGB mechanical keyboard. The reason that we're including the Red Dragon is that what it lacks in extra features like media keys and macro keys, it makes up for in noticeably better build quality and to my eye, a cleaner, sharper aesthetic. Finally, if you're not trying to win a spot on your local esports team and you care equally about the typing experience, we've got to give the nod to the G610 Orion. It's a straightforward, well-performing board with a clean design and Cherry MX switches. It's got all the right features like media keys, backlighting and angle adjustment while still coming in as low as 65 bucks on promo. Speaking of promo, here's an offer for you. Check out Pulseway, the real-time remote monitoring and management software that helps you fix problems on the go by sending commands from any mobile device. It's compatible with Windows, Mac, Linux, and Pulseway's single app gives you remote desktop functionality too. So you can do all kinds of things. You can get access to real-time system status. You can see system resource utilization. You can check logged in users and network performance, manage Windows updates, and more. And you can even create and deploy custom scripts to automate your IT tasks. So so try it out for free today at pulseway.com or through the link in the video description. So thanks for watching guys, bye. If you enjoyed this video, maybe you'd also like our cheap high refresh rate monitor roundup to go with your, you know, affordable mechanical keyboard. For the middleweight crown. To be, oh no! You f***er! <laughs>